This documentary is one in a series on Oregon artists and is produced by the Salem Art Association. The series overall is entitled Preservation of Oregon's Artistic Heritage, and it provides very exciting documentation of how some of the state's leading artists have gone about their creative lives. Each video features an individual who has created art in Oregon for at least a generation and who, at the time of filming, is still active in art making. Each film is complete on its own, yet each is part of the ongoing series of artist profiles. At the same time, a website has been created for the project to provide classroom curriculum ideas for school teachers statewide. The Preservation of Oregon's Artistic Heritage Project is thus of interest to a variety of constituencies, ranging from those already interested in Oregon art history and wanting to learn more, to general audiences seeking an introduction to this rich history, to teachers who present Oregon culture in their classrooms, and to their students. The video you are about to watch features the Oregon painter and printmaker Jack McClarty, who moved with his family to Portland as a child in 1921 and has lived there ever since. Urban Portland, indeed, is central to Jack McClarty's imagination, and many of his works over the years have dealt with the streets, sidewalks, buildings, bridges, and rivers of Portland, always with a sense of wit and sometimes satiric commentary about modern life in general. Its go with the crowd mentality, its traffic, its sloganism, its sometimes unenlightened and even brutal political leadership. Jack McClarty is one of Oregon's pioneering modernists. His work is always figurative and representational on some level, but he abstracts form, uses color in arbitrary and expressive terms, lets brushwork and print textures speak for themselves, allows his work to remain turbulent and urgent in its broken forms and disorienting colors. The turbulence is offset by high comedy, however. Ultimately, the magic of McClarty's work is its engagement and yet seeming tolerance of and even affection for modern life and its tendencies toward chaos. Jack McClarty taught for many years at the Pacific Northwest College of Art, beginning there when it was called the Museum Art School. He and his wife Barbara have been active players on the Oregon art scene for years. They established the Image Gallery in Portland in 1961 to showcase historical and contemporary Oregon art. Over the years, they have published books and catalogs on various Oregon artists and donated numerous works of art to public collections around the state. Jack and Barbara McClarty are models of cultural citizenship in Oregon. This fact, together with Jack's importance as one of the state's most original modernists, makes it fitting that he is one of the artists documented in the Preservation of Oregon's Artistic Heritage Project. When my folks came here, it was in 1921 into Portland. So my mother, who was really the businesswoman, in this situation, uh, took on the business of either running a boarding house, which she did a number of times, and then when we moved to Portland, because they thought there was going to be a big exposition of some kind, which never happened, but she uh, rented this this boarding house, a hotel, apartment house, called the City Hall Apartments, in fact, and uh, so my father could do some of the minor work, repairs and locks and uh, paper hanging, painting, everything like that. And my first masterpiece was when I was about five years old, I think, and somebody, I suppose, had me drawing with crayons or something, and I drew a laughing horse. And this was a great success. I don't think I've ever equaled it in the rest of my career. It's just a laughing horse that people thought was wonderful. <laughs> No one but my friends knew that I could draw well, and I was drawing, obviously, kind of all the time. And it took me quite a long time to uh, get to the museum art school. So when they say, when did you start, in a way, you don't know. It was gradual. I did it. I did it like, as kids do, just uh, images that provide an outlet for you of some kind. And... and uh, the museum art school was kind of a last resort. I didn't know what I wanted to do, and somebody steered me there. And uh, I had tried commercial art school before that, which 
I don't know why I thought knew it was so bad, but I did know it was was not at all what I wanted to do. It had a kind of commercial, sort of phony promotional a aspect that I didn't like. On the other hand, the museum art school, the first year I went there, my folks agreed to let me go half days. And it was, and it's through art and art school, and interestingly, that I have to say that my academic interests grew finally so that uh, I have done an awful lot of reading and, and uh, read history and everything else because in art you get into that. You start seeing things from the Renaissance, Michelangelo and then Rembrandt and all sorts of things that almost force you to deal with uh, historical aspects of the thing. But the part that that interested me was uh, that all these connections uh, that expanded my own consciousness. After three years at the Museum Art School, I went to New York. Uh, I had been hearing about it. It was like Paris was for the writers at that time, Hemingway and all that. There was a, a, a mythic quality to it that said, you, if you're going to be an artist, you should go to Paris. But the war, the war came along, Second World War, ruined that whole thing. It, it uh, shoved the center of art to New York eventually, but at the time it just ruined the European artists' context. They had nowhere to go, they didn't have any money. They, uh, they, uh, quite a few of them went to England or to, uh, or to countries other than Paris and, and France. But the whole experience, I suppose, of a, I was almost like a country boy going to the big city in New York. And uh, that was sort of the thing to do, but, um, but I was out of my element. And uh, not artistically, I, by, I was bombarded by all these new things that I hadn't ever seen. Uh, in Portland, Cezanne was still the big modern painter. And I got to New York and started, and there were hundreds of Cezannes. You know, everybody was painting Cezannes. <laughs> and a little later than that, they were painting Picassos, and it was 